Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about care of peripheral intravenous lines. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be what are peripheral lines, what is the use of peripheral line, why is caring of peripheral line is important? What are the key steps and considerations for caring a patient with a peripheral IV line? Let's get into the topic. A peripheral intravenous catheter is a thin plastic tube inserted into your patient's bloodstream through a vein in the periphery of the body, typically in the hand, arm, or forearm. It is used for various purposes including hydration, drug administration, and blood transfusions. Why is carrying peripheral line is important? First is infection prevention. Proper care of a peripheral IV line helps prevent infections at the insertion site and bloodstream infections. Next is patient safety. Patients rely on peripheral IV lines for the administration of medications, fluids, and blood products. Ensuring the safety of these lines avoid complications and discomfort. Next is minimizing complications. Peripheral IV lines can lead to complications such as infiltration, phlebitis, etc. Proper care helps minimize these risks and reduce the need for line replacements or additional procedures. Next is venous access maintenance. Peripheral IV lines provide the primary or only means of venous access in some cases. Maintaining these access points is crucial, especially in cases where repeated venipuncture is challenging or painful. Next, we will be discussing about the care aspects of peripheral IV line under five headings and not the procedure. Following five headings are assessment, scrub the hub, transparent dressing, use of extensions with closed system, flushing, and locking. Let's discuss this one by one. Under assessment, first comes pain. Pain assessment and scoring is done by using P, Q, R, S, T. This we have discussed in one of our previous video and the link is given in the description box. This assessment helps to quantify the intensity of the pain level of patient and plan for further interventions. For example, if the patient is experiencing severe pain at the site, it means recite the cannula. Mix comes redness. Carefully observe the area of redness to determine if it is localized or spreading. Monitor for any other signs of complications such as swelling, pain, or fever. Next is inflammation. Inflammation around an intravenous cannula site or the vein should be assessed. IV cannula inflammation is characterized by redness, swelling, warmth, tenderness, and discomfort at or near the insertion site. Next is discharge. Fever may be caused because of infection at the IV site, which can cause discharge that may be prolonged, that is pus filled, and accompanied by redness, warmth, and tenderness. Infection can occur when the IV insertion site is not properly cleaned and disinfected or due to bacterial contamination. If infection is suspected, the IV cannula should be removed immediately. Next comes patency. Patency refers to the unobstructed flow of fluids through the IV cannula, and it is crucial to check once in a shift in order to ensure that it remains open and functional for the safe and effective administration of medications, fluids, or other treatments. Next comes date of insertion. Recording the date of IV cannula insertion and its duration are essential for patient care and safety. Recite the cannula according to your institutional policies or use clinical judgment. 
The Visual Infusion Flabitis VIP scale is a widely used tool for assessing and grading the severity of phlebitis, which is inflammation of a vein often caused by the presence of an intravenous catheter or cannula. So for what we have discussed is all about assessment and now let's see what is scrub the hub. Scrub the hub refers to the practice of cleaning and disinfecting the access port or hub of a medical device such as an intravenous catheter or central line. What is a hub? Hub refers to the end of the catheter that connects to the blood lines or infusions. Why is scrubbing the hub important? Catheter hub is a known source for catheter related bloodstream infections and needleless connectors or sources for microbial contamination. So, scrubbing the hub is important. When to scrub the hub? Scrub the hub prior to accessing the line to administer medications, fluids, flushes, or blood draws. And how do we scrub the hub? Perform hand hygiene, wear gloves, use chlorhexidin or 70% alcohol swab and scrub the hub in a twisting motion for 15 seconds. Allow the hub to dry for 15 seconds. So total 30 seconds. After that, the hub can be accessed with sterile devices for infusing medication or drawing blood. Next comes transparent dressing. Vascular access devices should be secured with transparent dressing. Here in this picture, peripheral IV line is secured with transparent dressing. Why is it important? It is because for protection, transparent dressings act as a barrier that protects the vascular access device insertion site from contamination that could lead to infection. Next is visibility. Transparent dressing allows healthcare providers to monitor the site for signs of infection, redness, oozing, inflammation, or other IV complications. Moreover, these dressings are waterproof and easy to apply when compared to any other devices. Next comes use of extensions with closed system. What is the use of IV extension? To prevent catheter dislodgement, IV extensions can help secure the catheter in place by reducing tension and movement at the insertion site. This minimizes the risk of catheter dislodgement, which can lead to IV complications such as phlebitis, bleeding, infiltration, or the need for catheter replacement. What is the use of closed system? IV extensions are designed to maintain a closed system. This means that when healthcare providers connect medications, flushes, or additional IV fluids, they can do so without exposing the internal IV catheter to the external environment. A closed system helps to prevent contamination and infection. And now comes flushing and locking. First is Flushing IV flushing Injecting a sterile solution, typically normal saline or heparinized saline, into an intravenous catheter to clear medications, blood and blood products out of an intravascular device and into the bloodstream. Why is flushing important? In order to maintain catheter patency, to prevent IV complications such as occlusion, phlebitis, etc. To prevent drug-drug interactions, while administering multiple IV injections, IV flush should be used between injections in order to prevent drug-drug interactions. Now, when is IV flushing done? Before administering injection, after administering injection, and between injections. Now, locking. What is Locking For saline locks or intermittent catheters that are not currently in use but left in place for future access, it is typically recommended to flush them with saline 
unlock them after each use, usually every 8 to 12 hours to maintain dependency of IV and prevent occlusion. So, these five topics which we have discussed will be useful for the nurses while taking care of patients with any of the vascular access devices. So, so far we have discussed about care of peripheral intravenous catheter under which we have seen what are peripheral lines, what is the use of peripheral lines, why care of peripheral line is important and what are the key steps and considerations for carrying a patient with peripheral IV line. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.